Joint orientation axis is important in the rigging. This is how it looks when it's set correctly and how it looks when it's set wrong. In this video, we will create the skeleton for the character and fix the joint orientation axis for polished animation. We will use the same model that we used in class. Since the dress will be animated using the end cloth, we don't have to rig it. Select the dress and hide it. Hit the space key. Then hit the space key again to enter the side view. Here, we'll start creating joints for the leg. Switch to the rigging menu. Go to skeleton, create joints. We'll start at the thigh joint. Click on the mesh to create joints. If the mesh does not show up, go to the shading menu and turn on X-ray joints. We can delete the joints and restart. Go to skeleton, create joints. Start at the thigh. Then, click on the knee. The ankle. The ball and the toe. Here's an important part. We want to keep this angle at the knee joint. Later on, we will set up an IK control on the leg. And a straight leg skeleton will make the computer confused and don't know in which direction to bend the knee. With the angle at the knee joint, the computer knows the knee is supposed to bend backward. Now, we'll work on the spine joints. Hit the Command key and the D key to duplicate the leg joint. Delete the knee joint. Now, we have only one joint and we can place it on any spot. Also, we can switch between different views to check and adjust its position. We'll place the hip joint on this spot. Duplicate the hip joint and make the first spine joint, place it around the belly. Place the second spine joint on the waist. Place the third spine joint on the chest. Place two joints on the neck. We will use the bottom one as the neck joint and use the top one as the head joint. Place one joint on the top of the head. Place one joint around the eyeball. We'll leave it there for now. Double check the position and adjust it if needed. Now, let's parenting them together. Select the joint on the top of the head, hold the shift key and select the head joint, hit the P key. It will parent the top joint to the head joint. Parent the head joint to the neck joint. Parent the neck joint to the chest joint and repeat this process to connect them together. The hip joint will be the root joint in this hierarchy. Select the thigh joint and go to the front view. Move the leg joint to the side. From the front view, we can see that the leg is not straight. We need to move up the thigh joint a little bit. If I move the thigh joint, the knee joint and the foot joint would follow. However, I only want to move the thigh joint and don't want its children joints to follow. Select the thigh joint by holding down the D key we can move the joint separately. Same thing for the knee joint. Hold down the D key and adjust its position. We can move the ankle joint a little bit. Now, we'll move on to the arm and fingers. Duplicate the thigh joint and delete the knee joint on its hierarchy. We will place it on the shoulder. Duplicate it and place the new joint on the upper arm. Create joint for the elbow and the wrist. Then, we can go to the perspective view and adjust their position. When working on rigging, you can stand in a T-pose and test how your joints work. 
The forearm will bend forward, so we have to tell the program to bend the elbow joint in that direction. That has the same concept as the knee joint. When creating the arm joints, we will leave an angle on the elbow joint. Move the upper arm joint forward and move the elbow joint backward. Move the wrist joint forward. Now we have a nice angle here. Duplicate the wrist joint and we will use it for the finger. Parent the wrist joint to the elbow joint, then goes to the upper arm joint and to the shoulder joint. We'll stop at the shoulder joint for now. Switch to the front view to work on the finger joints. Each finger has three joint, however, we need an additional joint on the fingertip. That's to say, we'll create four joints on each finger. The function of the fingertip joint is to keep the third joint's aiming direction correctly. I'll explain it in the later section of this video. Let's move on to the thumb. Place one joint here. You may touch and feel your thumb to check its structure. Here is where the first thumb joint located. Create the rest joints for the thumb. It will have four joints in total. Then, we can switch to the perspective view and check the joint's position. Move each joint along the z-axis to get them on the finger. Same thing for the joints on the index finger. Now, we can parent the finger joints together. Select the root joint, duplicate it to make the joints for the middle finger. Since the middle finger is at a higher position, we can select each joint, hold down the D key, and adjust its position. Same thing for the ring finger and the pinky finger. We can parent the thumb joints together. Then, select the root joint on each finger. Hold down the shift key and select the wrist joint, hit the P key to parenting them together. Parent the thumb joint to the wrist joint. Now, we finish the joints on the left arm. Select the shoulder joint, hit the command key and the D key to duplicate it. Hit the command key and the G key to group the duplicated joints. Since the group's pivot point is at the center of the world, if we type a negative value on Scalex channel, we can mirror the joints to the other side. I changed the Scalex value from 1 to negative 1 and mirrored the joints to the right arm. Then, freeze transformation on the group and delete history. Now you can select the shoulder joint and ungroup it by hit the Shift key and the P key. Delete the group. The freeze transformation on the group helped to clean the negative scale value on the joints, and now we can see that each joint only has negative position value. The rotation and scale values on each joints are clean. Parent the shoulder joints to the chest joint. Repeat the same procedure to mirror the leg joints. Parent the thigh joint to the hip joint. We'll place the eye joint to the center of the eyeball mesh. That way, after rig the eyeball, the eyeball will be rotated based on its center point. Let's snap the eye joint to the center of the eyeball. On my model, the eyeballs are combined into one mesh, so I'll separate them first. Go to Modeling. Mesh. Separate. Now we each eyeball is on a separate mesh. Select both eyeballs. Freeze transformation and delete history. Hit the shift key and the P key to unparent them. Now you can delete the folder. Always keep your file hierarchy clean. Select both eyeballs, go to modify, center pivot. Now each eyeball has its pivot point in the center of the mesh. Select both eyeballs, go to display, transform display, and turn on the local rotation axis. Hit the number 4 on your keyboard to turn on the wireframe mode so we can see the local rotation axis of each eyeball. 
Select the joint, hold the V key, and you'll be able to snap it to the center of the eyeball. When you are done, select both eye joints and parent them to the head joint. Now, we finished creating the skeleton for the character. And you can turn off the local rotation axis on the eyeball. Now, let's take a look at the joint orientation axis and see why the joint orientation axis is important. I duplicated the skeleton we created and deleted the arm joints. I messed up the spine joints orientation axis. Let's check how the spine would work. Hold down the shift key and select all joints on the spine. When I rotate the joints, the spine's supposed to bend forward. However, when I rotate the joints, the spine looks really weird. No matter what axis I selected, I can't get the spine to work properly. The reason why it happens is, each joint's axis is aiming in a different direction, causing them to rotate in a different direction. You can see that on the first joint, the y-axis is aiming up. However, on the second joint, the y-axis is aiming to left. On the third joint, the y-axis is aiming forward. The fourth and fifth joint all aiming in a different direction. To make the spine functioning correctly, we have to fix the joint's orientation. Select the hip joint, right-click and select hierarchy. This will select all joints that parented to the hip joint. Go to the rigging menu, skeleton, orient joint. Go to the tool setting. I'll explain the settings later, but click on the toggle local axis visibility at first. It will display all joints local axis, and we can see that they all point to different directions. I set the primary axis as Y. That means after applied the tool, each joint's Y axis will be pointing to its child joint. The hip joint's Y axis will be pointing to the spine joint, and the spine joint's Y axis will be pointing to the waist joint. For the secondary axis, it can be set as one of the other axes. I set it as the Z axis. The third line means the direction you would like your secondary axis aiming to. I set as the Z axis as well. That's to say, each joint's Z axis will aiming to the world Z axis. Check on Orient Children of selected joints, and it will apply the tool to all joints in the hierarchy. To apply to the tool, we need to make sure that all joints have clean rotation value. Otherwise, the Orient Joint tool will not work. It pops up an error message and says joints have non-zero rotations. To fix that, we need to make sure that all joints have clean rotation value. Select the joints, freeze transformation and delete history, and you will have clean rotation value. After we applied the tool, each joint's local y-axis should aim to its child joint. All joints on the original skeleton have clean rotation value, so we will apply the tool directly. Select the hip joint, right-click and select its hierarchy. Go to the Orient Joint Tool setting and click Toggle Local Axis Visibility. Now we can see that all joints Y axis are facing front. Select the hip joint and apply the Orient Joint Tool. Now, each joint should aim to its child joint. We've done with the Orient Joint Tool and you can close it now. There are some minor issues that we have to manually fix them. The fingertip joint still not aiming in the right way, and that's because it does not has a child object and doesn't know where to aim. We can follow its parent joint's orientation and manually rotate it. Now we kept value on its rotation channel. Remember to freeze transformation and delete history. Though the fingertip joint does not control any mesh, it helped to lock the third joint's aiming direction, and that's why we created it. Rotate all fingertip joints in the correct direction, and remember to freeze transformation and delete history after applied the change. The top head joint has the same issue since it doesn't have a child joint. We will manually fix it as well. The eye joint's y-axis aim to the front, and that's fine because that's the pupil's aiming direction. Fix the toe joint's orientation. Now we finished creating the skeleton for the character, and all joints are aiming in the right direction. 
In your future project, after you apply the orient joint tool, double check those joints that don't have a child joint and manually fix their orientation axis. Remember to freeze transformation and delete history after you applied the change.